Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm very grateful to be doing another video for you. Uh, when I try to decide on videos, sometimes I struggle. Well, because I want to find something that you'll really like, but I'm also looking for something that I enjoy. So um, I happened to come across a couple of posts by uh, a lady that I have followed for years on uh, her posts and on Facebook. She has a blog and her name is Linda Ganaw and her blog is Time for Tangling. And I recently came across a couple of posts that she had done. She was inspired by something that Tomas Padros had posted. And she did a couple of tiles uh, based on what he had done. And they were kind of similar to this, except hers were um, bigger and different. And I will leave um, links to both of her posts because she did two different ones that used a lot of botanical type patterns. And so um, this morning I just sat down, this is a phi tile that I cut and uh, I just went through some of the tiles or some of the patterns that she had done and with the link that I'll leave you, she has links to all of the patterns that she used. Um, and I will put down the names, you know, the cards for these as I do them. Uh, this is just a card that I painted with uh, Lindy's Magicals. And I have really enjoyed just using a sponge um, like this, okay, and dip it in the watercolor and then just kind of sponge on different colors. It is so easy to do and you come out with really pretty colors. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that I don't like to color. <laughs> so I like having a tile that already has the color on it. Uh, today, I am going to use a Zentangle tile. Uh, I have enjoyed going back to some of the classic ways of doing Zentangle. And a three and a half inch tile is definitely classic. I'm going to try to zoom in not so much that my hands get in the way. Okay, so what I started out with on this one is just making a wavy kind of border. So I'm just going to do that on this one. And originally I was going to go back and blacken that in and I might do that later. But for now let's just start with a wave all the way around our tile. And this will be our border. And I have thunderstorms heading my way, so I'm hoping that uh, that won't bother the recording. We weren't supposed to have thunderstorms until a couple hours from now, but I have found that uh, the weather in the Houston, Texas area is 100% unpredictable. Okay, um, what I did was I went through uh, the, the patterns that Linda used and found some that I really liked, and then also went through my patterns that I have and found a few that I really like. And so I'm just going to start putting them down 
and show you the ones that I decide. I really liked this one. It is called Wind Flow by Nadine Roller, and she's a C to C T. So let's start with that. I'm going to use a Micron 01 as long as it holds out, possibly a uh, graphite pencil and a blending stump. And wind flow starts with, let me set that up there so you can kind of see it as I'm going. I'm just going to come off of this. Okay. And then she puts an orb. And we're going to leave kind of a little white spot on there. If you have trouble with that, you can always come back later and just use a white jelly roll to add that sparkle. Okay, so we do that and then we put a V and then off of this V, I'm going to do another line and make like a little triangle. Do that on both sides. So it almost looks like a bow. And then we're going to put lines down, just two lines to divide it. And then we're going to come up here to the top and fill in those two sides. So it ends up, <clears throat> excuse me, looking kind of like a sparkle. Let's do that again on this one. This is uh, one of my favorite things to do is just draw botanicals. If I can't think of anything else, that's what I end up doing. Okay. Let's bring another one around. Okay, so your little ball. A V, and then a triangle for each of these. Divide it, put a line across the top, and then fill in the top corner on each of these. So today is August 27th and September 1st, the list of Inktober Tangles will be released. <clears throat> I do plan to do those videos. Haven't decided exactly the format that I'm gonna use, but I, I might do them on Bijou tiles, which are the two inch tiles that or I'm going to divide a larger piece of paper and put my uh, inktober tangles on that I think these are so cute. I'm really grateful for all the blogs that are out there and the people that share what they've found because there's just so much. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, so that was wind flow, and it does usually start with a little orb down here too, but I'm having all my patterns come off of this edge. All right, decisions. I really liked that one, so let's put 
that one on there next. This one is Fern by Jane Monk. And it starts out very similar to um, Mocha. So I'm going to come off that edge. And come around. And then we're just going to make kind of the loop. But this is how some ferns look when they're unfolding. So now we're just going to put a little wiggly line all the way down. And have mine get a little bit smaller as they go down. Okay. And then I'm going to put another one right next to it. Just take your time. Don't forget to breathe. Relax your shoulders. And I'm talking to myself <laughs> because I get tense. <clears throat> Only because I'm wanting to do perfect for you guys. And that's not our goal, is it? Okay. I'm actually, to fill this in, I'm going to switch to a Micron 08. And it has a thicker nib on it. If this one's going to work. I actually had a 10. Okay. I'm going to switch. That one's not working. Sorry about that. So I have another 08. Hopefully this one's doing better. Use that to fill this in. I don't buy new pins very often and I'm afraid that they do eventually dry out if you don't keep using them. So I do apologize when I end up having to switch pins. Might be time to get some new ones, huh? Because <clears throat> this one's not working so well either. In the last project pack, which is project pack 18, one of the pins was a size 10. So it's a little bit bigger than this. Okay. The ink is flowing a little bit better now. But just enjoy the filling in, too. Um, I'm trying to not take too much time on this. But when you're doing this for yourself, just enjoy even filling in your patterns. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm always happy to find 
new botanical patterns. That's why I was immediately attracted to Linda's post. She also added um, several patterns that were just things she had learned from clip art. And uh, I've done that also. But I'm just going to use named patterns today. Okay. All right. So that was Fern by Jane Monk. Um, Another one that I really like, and I don't know if I've taught this one before or not, but it's Jolly by Sanyukta Saxena, and she's a CZT. And I'm going to come out from this corner and just make a spiral. And I'm still using the 08 pin. And now I'm going to go kind of to the top of this and then just start putting some long triangles or spikes. And she has the first one a little bit bigger than the rest. And then just make some more, a little at a time, coming around. And as you get close to this side, we're just going to begin making them a little bit smaller. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. Just these simple little spikes. I do enjoy easy pretty patterns. And this one reminds me of the um, fern that we've done over here. And again on this side, we're going to make it smaller as we come around. I think we'll stop here. I'm going to put one more right here. Okay. So again, that was Jolly. And another one that I thought was really cute is this one called D Boops by Vern Foster. And this is the basic pattern going straight with just these four little stems. And a variation is to do it in a larger group and make it curved. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch back to my one. Just kind of a curve. We're going to add an orb and fill it in. 
and then one more dot above it. Let's do another one. A big one and a little one. Big one, big little, or big orb, little orb. And I'll add one more here. And then next to each one of these, we're going to put a smaller, shorter stem. And then these each have four little dots coming off of them. Okay. And I'm going to pretend that one is coming up this way, goes behind that, and comes out. I just want to put one more over here. Okay. So there we go. Again, this is your art. Do with it what you would like to do. Okay. I want to show you another one that I really liked. And this one is called Berberis by Annette Rumpler. And she's a CZT. And I think this one is fun. And I'm going to come off, and I do apologize, sometimes I forget to come back to center. It's going to come up this way and curve. And add a big, like, teardrop there at the end. And she has um, space left in the center that's not colored in. Okay, and then we're going to come off of that and make a little, almost like a little thorn. Okay, and then we can come up and do that again. I'll leave a little white spot on there. And then come up, put our little spike, and then we can come off of that and add another one. This is something fun to do, like for a greeting card, a birthday card or something to give to somebody. And if you look at the step out for this, she has a tile that is just filled with this pattern. And it's so pretty. And again, it's very simple to do. Okay, let's have one come out this way.
My granddaughters are back in school. And so I have more time during the day, but am I accomplishing more? No. <laughs> but I need to uh, get some things done. Let's have one more come up this way. I just enjoy doing this one, so do what you enjoy. And again, if you needed to, you could come back with a jelly roll pen and enhance these little dots. Okay. Um, since I mentioned it in the video, I'm adding this to show you that I did a Zendala tile with just this pattern, Berberus. I used a size 10 micron. I don't have that with me right now, but very relaxing, very meditative. Um, I put white jelly roll in a couple of places and then I didn't really like it. So I didn't put it all over, but just to show you, that's a cool thing that you can do. This is another one that I have seen in the past, but I haven't used it. And it's easy to do. This one here, this is Puchong by Michelle Lin, CZT, and this is the basic pattern. So let me show you how that one works. I'm gonna have it come up this way and around. And we put kind of a teardrop here. And then basically we're gonna do a little curved line and bring it back down. Kind of a triangle with a curve on top. And then we're gonna put a line that goes behind there. Okay, so put another little curve just below that one. Bring your lines down. Okay. And then put the little curve behind. So each one of these is basically coming out of the one below it. So just a curve with the triangle below it. And then that line is going behind and meets that other little side. Okay, let's do one more. Okay. So, like I said, this has been unplanned. I want to put something here. Okay, let's just do another one of those. I'm going to bring it around. Curve it through here. Come up. Do our little T 
teardrop. An arch. And then bring your triangle down. Bring this around. But in this version, let's fill in this part. And we could go back and do it on that one. We'll see what we think. Curve, the triangle, go behind, and then fill that in. Okay, let's keep going. And I have done this before where I took a tile similar to this and just filled it with patterns like this and just find another pattern that you like and just keep adding it. And that's one of the most relaxing things for me. I have fun coloring my paper. And sometimes I'll do a large sheet of paper, um, like eight and a half by 11. Or I have some paper that's, um, I guess, eight by 12. And uh, just do the whole sheet and then cut it into tiles. And I really enjoy how that looks. Okay, so I really like that. I'm going to go ahead and fill these in over here. And that gives us a little drama that matches the other side. I like this variation. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of touch up with fescue. And fescue is a Zentangle original. Let's see, let's just fescue here. Can have some fescue coming off of this. And they're just going to come off the edges. Just do what feels right for you. You don't have to add these. You could add something else. I just wanted to kind of tie all this together.
one of my favorite people to follow when I first started doing Centangle was Melinda Barlow. And I still watch her videos and she always puts little fescues in there. All right. <laughs> okay. Very impromptu. I didn't plan exactly which patterns I was going to use, but um, this is what we have. As far as shading, I don't know that there's a lot of shading that I'll do on this. Um, I'm going to come up from here and just add a little bit of hatching down here in this corner. Just to kind of tie all that together. And I know there's little spots I've missed that I can touch up. As Maria calls it, add a little bit of loving to your tile. All right, I'm going to put just a little bit of shading at the bottom of each of these little cones. And then just very gently soften that. And my blending stump already has some graphite on it, so I don't need to add much to it. Okay, let's just use what I have to add a little bit of graphite at the bottom of each of these. Right. Trying to decide. And then I want to show you that I did a little bit darker border and then put graphite around the outside of it. And I really like how that turned out. Trying to decide right. where I want to put my chalk. I think I'll slip it here. Remember when you've done your art to sign and date it. Um, I always encourage people to put their the names of the patterns on the back of the tile, like on this one, because Inevitably, I'm going to go back and try to figure out what I did, and uh, I want to know the names of the patterns. So there's that one. Again, for this one, we used Berberis, Fescue, Huchong. Mm -hmm. um, D-Bops, Jolly, 
wind flow, and burn. And again, I will leave uh, a link to Linda's uh, two blog posts where she did uh, so many of these patterns in her two tiles that were just gorgeous. Uh, another thing is put your tile down and come back and look at it again later. I do that many times. I might not like it and I'll put it aside. Also hold it at arm's length and look at it, but admire and appreciate what you've done. Don't worry about uh, comparing your work to other people. I have done that too many times. In fact, let me show this. Never compare yourself to others. We are all on our own journey, but feel free to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. We should always be growing and improving. So only compare yourself to yourself. And I know that my work has improved, but Again, this is not a contest. We're not being graded. We just want to enjoy each line because anything is possible one line at a time. All right. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I have noticed that people are using this hashtag. And I was kind of surprised when I found that. But you can use Barbara Langston CZT as a hashtag and not perfect Zen. And that helps me to find the tiles that you've done. And I apologize for some people who have posted their tiles and I didn't see them for a couple of days. But that's partly because I'm trying to not be so addicted to social media. All right. Thank you again. I hope you have a great weekend. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for following my videos. Thanks for your comments. And uh, I'm welcome to suggestions also. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye.